But what I'd like to do now is get you all to perhaps summarise for me what you think, if you were to kind of bullet point, you know, what, what you, know, you think 2023 is going to be about. And, you know, this is where we'll look back at this video next year, maybe, and have a bit of a chuckle. But, you know, if you're brave enough to kind of go out there and, and sort of, you know, and yes, Emma, you're, you're informed with some, some perhaps a bit more data than the rest of us. But what, perhaps we'll start with you, what, what do you think are the sort of few things that you're looking out for in 2023? So from a tech standpoint, what we're hearing is data, well, really strange technology, you might change, data, cloud, yep. APIs, right. automation, okay. metaverse, right. quantum, hugely okay. All right. going up so okay. in the next three years. Okay. Um, so, and, and again, the ARs and the VRs and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But I think what we've seen over the years is actually that intelligent business cannot be created unless it's the people and the processes and everything that wraps around it and the culture. And of stuff. course. So, yeah, all the good architectural yeah. things that en enterprise architects and solution architects and, before and so we even about. Yeah, absolutely. And before yeah. we even head into the external factors. But I think that retention of teams isn't always going to be the highest amount they're paid. It will be culture. And the and useful work, the purpose, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, from a product perspective, getting back to the basics, mm -hmm. focus on your users, have 10x value, you know, really um, have that clear adoption plan because, um, you know, in a, in a period of limited resources, you really, really, really need to focus on your users. And that, that's product 101, but um, I don't think the product discipline, which is only 10 years old, has really done a good job of it because there's many products out there that um, don't solve um, customer needs. Um, I think from a societal impact, um, I would I would love sort of a more national conversation about what we want our NHS to be. Um, you know, what what is the right thing that we want as a as a country um, and a increase in trust in our public services. Yeah. Um, I think trust is absolutely sacrosanct um, and it, it has had a bit of a battering over the last few years. So what does that mean with trust? It means meeting someone in real life, looking them in the eye and um, putting aside your differences and agreeing to come together over a common goal, whatever that is. Interesting. I'm going to pick up on something you've said there. I think 2023 is going to be the year of constraints. I think we've not had yeah. several constraints for quite some time. Okay. If you take the personal aspect of that, mm -hmm. it's interest rates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are going to be financi financially constrained. Financially constrained. Yeah. And um, we talked about labour shortages. We're going to be labour constrained mm -hmm. too. Um, and if you talk about the business side of things. You know, businesses are going to be very much more constrained in what they can do, um, just from geo, you know, a geopolitical point of yeah. view. Mm -hmm. With you know, uh, some of the things we've mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. I think we've become unused to constraints. Certainly, the degree we've mm -hmm. we've got to have. I think it's going to have a big societal. It's going to have a big business. But also because of the pandemic, we've tried to throw them off. Like in response yes. to mm -hmm. being very constrained, we've almost mm -hmm. gone and done all the things that we've. And then kind of rewinding that is going to be quite difficult. I it's think. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's a totally different set of constraints, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's more, yeah. what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It's it's more basic set of constraints. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to lead, uh, as an employee, it's going to lead to a much bigger focus on efficiency. Yeah. And there's a big tension there between that and the make people values, the concepts of values. Yeah, treating and people fairly. And and exactly. Yeah. Right. How much do you sweat people versus yeah. treat them fairly is going to be... Yeah, yeah I think we'll, get it, we'll perhaps get brands showing their true colours around some of this stuff, right, as things get... Very much so. We just talked about the whole greenwashing thing mm -hmm. where people were taking credit for stuff they would have yeah. done anyway. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more of that. The companies are going to become more ruthless, I think, mm. both with us as consumers and as yeah. employees. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think we are, as people, we're naturally going to have to. So how do we balance that against trying to form communities to deal with this in a cooperative way versus that kind of selfish consumer kind of way? And I think that goes to your point about what do we want from the NHS. I mean, we talked about education. I think we need to have a, a viewpoint about that as education yes. too. We've gone from actually globally quite a well-respected, mm. largely skill-based yeah. education system to a more trying to hit a target yeah. yes. education system yes. Yes. as we 
you know, kind of discussed here, I think that that's potentially the wrong way to go. Are we in a position as a society when we're facing tight constraints and we have to be as efficient as possible, when we can say, well, actually, we need to back off from that in our education system and we don't want to necessarily look for the most efficient on whatever metric that is, education system, we want one that's more focused on skills, society and the, the rounding of the individual. Ironically, as we've used more data to sort of analyse things like education, yep. we've lost maybe our way and, and actually ironically we need more of a gut feel and more of a creative and arty sort of side. It's of the difference between education and training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think if we look at what happened with COVID, there were organisations who would compete historically who suddenly came together. There was this fabulous ecosystem, a collaboration that grew and grew at rapid speed. And you know, LinkedIn would see people from different industries saying, I can help, I can help. Over weekends, people were sending messages, I need this and I need that, and so on. Fabulous things that people created. And I think if with economic downturn, so often comes strain in every sense, personal, professional, and if we can try and avoid that fight or flight into how can we actually support each other within businesses, outside businesses, with our customers, with our employees, and across industry. So the this, ecosystem sort of Yeah, side of I think. That community. It's going to be connection. key. Yeah, okay. Rather than we're fighting struggle and all yeah. right, how do we actually collectively do that together and yes. look at new ways of working?